There are a lot of Christians who fill churches every Sunday with a weak and shallow faith. Many of them have basic misunderstandings about the Bible and theology and can't even articulate fundamental concepts like the Trinity. How can this be if they're supposed to be getting an education every week when they attend church? I think it's because we're doing something seriously wrong. Our teachers and leaders are doing something seriously wrong. We end up having weak leaders in churches because, I think, we generally don't even know what the pastors who we put in charge of our churches are even supposed to be doing. We don't even know what a pastor is, or else we wouldn't be calling a lot of the guys who stand up in front of the church on Sunday a pastor at all. Stay tuned. Welcome to Good Monsters, the podcast that critically looks at modern Christianity and Christian culture from a biblical perspective. My name is Cody Lawrence, and today we're going to be talking about pastors. I want to start off this episode by saying I think there are a lot of good pastors, and I think there are a lot of bad pastors. And I think those bad pastors exist primarily because We don't, as a modern Christian community, really understand what a pastor is and what a pastor is supposed to do. And if we did, like I said, we wouldn't be calling a lot of the guys who stand up in front of church on Sunday a pastor at all, because according to the Bible, they're not. I also want to talk about a few of the problems that that creates for us um, in modern Christianity. And some ways to remedy this or avoid it or um, get a person who is actually a pastor or a good pastor as a church or find yourself a church with a good pastor. So here we go. Um, First, I want to define what pastor is. Pastor and the word shepherd are actually synonymous. Pastor comes from the word shepherd and biblically, There are lots of passages and verses about shepherds. There's not that many passages and verses about pastors. Um, I think in general, what we call pastors today is a church leader, is the person who mm, leads the church or a person who's a part of a group of people who lead the church. They're the people in charge of other people in churches. That's who we call pastors. Usually they teach. Sometimes they don't. Um, And that's pretty much it. Uh, We call them by the title pastor. And I think most Christians don't really have any idea what the word pastor means other than you're the you're the person who's pastoring me uh, or whatever that means. So biblically, um, we see definitions for an overseer in Titus 1 and 1 Timothy 3. And these are like very clear guidelines for um, what I would interpret as leaders of congregations or leaders of gatherings of Christians. And so I'll just go through both of these verses. Um, In Titus 1, 9, it says that overseers must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught so that he might be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also rebuke those who contradict it. Go ahead and read Titus 1 on your own time if you'd like to get more details of the qualifications for elders in churches and overseers and um, church roles. But here, Paul in Titus clearly says that um, overseers are supposed to teach. And we do, and they do. That's what we see in, in churches on Sunday. The, the person who oversees the church is usually the one who stands up in front and teaches on Sunday. It says the same thing in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse uh, 2. It says that overseers must um, be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach. 
So I want to focus here on the teaching area because I think that's what most churches focus on when they're looking for a pastor. They focus on the ability to teach. Um, and later in this podcast, I'd like to get into how modern churches generally go about hiring pastors. And I am uh, personally acquainted with this process because I was hired as a pastor at a church and I also worked under other pastors and I experienced the whole um, job search process, both myself and for other people job searching. Um, And you might be surprised that it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird how a lot of churches go about hiring pastors, but I'll get into that later. Anyway, um, typically, at least in the churches that I've been familiar with, they focus on these two passages when they're looking at the qualifications for church leaders or overseers as the Bible calls them. Um, And also, these are the qualifications for elders in the church and and deacons is also mentioned in, in this same passage. And so these are clearly laid out qualifications for different church roles. But we don't see the word pastor mentioned here. I think we get the word pastor from another passage in Ephesians where it says that Jesus gives the church pastors. Um, I think it's a little bit of a leap to assume that pastors are church leaders or that church leaders are pastors, but in some way or another, we've ended up calling our church leaders pastors. But I think they're different things. Uh, I think they could, they could be the same. I think church leaders uh, can be, or I think pastors can be church leaders, but I also think that a pastor is a very specific kind of thing and Christians and churches miss the point of what pastors are. And if we look at what the Bible says about pastors or shepherds, I think we get a more full picture of what pastors are supposed to be and also a more full picture of maybe the problems that are going on in our churches. I want to make two main points here. One, I think it's necessary to be specific with our speech, especially when talking about church roles and other important biblical and theological issues. The second point I want to make is if we expect that our pastors are shepherds, and we should if we're using that language, then we need to hold them to that standard. Think about the pastors or the church leaders that you've experienced in your life and ask yourself just on your current understanding of what the word shepherd means, are they shepherds? Do they do what a shepherd does? You see, I think God specifically uses the word shepherd to give that role to certain humans because the two roles are very similar. The way that shepherds physically care for their sheep is very similar to the way that that shepherds in the church ought to care for the people who they're supposed to be caring for. Shepherds are supposed to be... um, Basically, not only teachers, but they're supposed to be shepherds. They're supposed to do a lot more than just teaching. And very often in churches, we we only see pastors teaching. Um, I think there are different ways to maybe structure churches and church leadership to where pastors um, are more visibly pastoring. So if you don't perceive your pastor, like if you go to a church of 500 people, for example, and your pastor doesn't take you personally out for coffee every week, I'm not saying he's a bad pastor necessarily. However, if you call your pastor a pastor and he is not discipling and walking beside and shepherding at least a handful of people, then he's not a pastor and therefore he shouldn't be called a pastor. This is a serious problem if we call these people pastors because, like I said, one, we're not using the right language. And language is very important because if we see the Bible saying something or using a certain term like pastor, we need to hold those words very seriously because we're taking this from the word of God. If we misuse these words that God gives us, then we're misusing the words of God. And also, again, like I said, if we use the word pastor... um, and we hold these pastoral expectations upon a person, we need to hold them to those expectations. And if they're not held to those expectations, then that's a disservice to them, and it's a disservice to the church. 
if you were to do a word study through the Bible of the word shepherd, if you were to go through the entire Bible and look at every instance of the word shepherd and see how it develops through scripture and see how early biblical understandings of shepherd in, are incorporated into the modern New Testament understanding of shepherd as somebody who shepherds people instead of shepherding sheep, you will see a beautiful, beautiful picture of, of the way that God has structured the world, the way that God has structured the church, and a very specific and necessary role that God gives in the body of Christ. And I think if we're not properly following these, not qualifications, let's say, but these guidelines, uh, the, the definition of what a pastor is, then we are missing something absolutely necessary to the body of Christ. Like it says in Ephesians that I mentioned before, again, Jesus gave the church pastors to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ. That's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12. So pastors are a pivotal and necessary role within the church, within the church with a capital C, I mean. So I hope you see now that it's important to call people what they are. Uh, I am very uncomfortable with calling people now who I perceive not as shepherds, as pastors, uh, I, I want to call them church leaders, um, but that's just me. I think it's going to be a, a hard sell to make to convince anybody else to say, stop using the word pastor in church if your pastor isn't a pastor. But I don't know. It's something to consider um, because I think we should be using proper language. Uh, or if you think your pastor should or is like is missing the mark in this in a serious way and your church isn't set up to disciple people well or to make sure that people or you are being shepherded, then maybe either you need to reach out to your church to get yourself or other members of that church shepherded, or you have to find somewhere else where you can be shepherded. And the last interesting thing that I wanted to talk about is the way that most churches go about hiring their church leaders or quote unquote pastors, um, at least in smaller churches and maybe larger churches do this too. But what I've personally experienced is, um, and this kind of makes sense, the, the most visible component of the job of a pastor is teaching. The thing that every single person in church sees is them teaching. They don't see them shepherding necessarily because maybe maybe they either don't shepherd at all um, if they're not actually a pastor or maybe they shepherd a smaller group of people and maybe teach them to shepherd others. And so everybody in the church eventually gets shepherded, which I think is a good model to follow, by the way. But because teaching is the most visible part of the job for a pastor, typically, at least in my experience, the thing that pastors are primarily hired for is their teaching ability. When, if in fact what we are looking for is pastors primarily and not teachers, we should be hiring people for their pastoring ability or their shepherding ability or their ability to disciple and to walk alongside people and to care for people and to make sure that they are being fed and being cared for. But that's not at least what I've seen. I see pastors very often being hired for their speaking ability. They're very charismatic. They are good speakers. They can hold a crowd's attention. But maybe with how they care for people, it's empty. And their shepherding ability, if in fact they have the expectation to shepherd, that's empty. And that is a massive, massive problem because churches, I mean, and I kind of understand to some extent why this happens because it's a lot easier to gauge somebody's speaking ability than it is to gauge their shepherding ability. You would have to say, reach out to a lot of different people and see like what kinds of things they've done through shepherding. Um, you like talk to friends, talk to people who they've mentored, talk to the other pastors they've worked with. Actually, this sounds a whole lot like just a job search and a job, um, like reaching out to references. And so it might not be that hard after all. 
because they're doing that work anyway. But the focus definitely is on speaking ability over shepherding ability. But in general, speaking ability is very easy to see in person and face to face because all you have to do is set them up in front of the church on Sunday or uh, in like a test room for a test audience and have them preach a sermon and you can gauge their speaking ability. And a lot of churches and a lot of churches that I have personally experienced do exactly that. They hire pastors just for their speaking ability. And the pastor as a shepherd is, is totally empty. And that leads to the other pastoral team and the rest of the church ultimately suffering in huge ways. So the the last question I would have is, what do I do if I'm at a church where the church leader isn't a pastor? Or you could ask, what if I'm at a church where I'm not being pastored or I'm not being shepherded? Or, Or what if I'm at a church where there are no shepherds? Because the question you ask here might depend on how important you think be the the church leader actually being a pastor is if we use the correct or the incorrect language for this if the church leader isn't a pastor that doesn't necessarily do anything bad for you uh, i i think that ultimately could very likely cause problems in the church but it might not cause any problems for your faith personally so what should you do if your church doesn't have a shepherd for a church leader Well, that could not even be a problem. Uh, I think where it does become a problem is if you are not being shepherded or the people of the congregation are not being shepherded. That means um, if they don't have a a mentor type person or if they don't have a shepherd shepherding them, walking beside them, uh, spending time with them, maybe you're the shepherd that needs to be shepherding somebody else. Um, If you feel the need to be shepherded in your church, however, I think you have a responsibility to step up and ask somebody if it's your lead pastor or if it's some other pastor in the church or if you're a part of a small group, you could talk to your small group leader or whatever because you, I think you have a responsibility to make sure that you are being shepherded by somebody. Or if you have the ability to and the gifting, you probably should be the one shepherding somebody else. And so I think if perhaps you're in a situation, if you're a staff member or just a, an attendee and you reach out to a person who should be responsible for making sure that you are shepherded and cared for and they don't provide you with that, then maybe you seek out some other way to do that. Uh, I think it's a lot easier to attend a church with a bad teacher and a good community than it is to attend a church with a bad community and a good teacher. Because you can seek good teaching elsewhere. You could listen to podcasts to get good teaching. You could go online to listen to good teaching. But you can't go online to get a community. And so I think churches, that's that's the very foundation of what a church is. A church is a gathering. And if you are not having your spiritual needs met from that gathering and you're not being shepherded and you don't have the ability to serve and participate in the body um, of that congregation and also have the congre- or the, the, that congregation pour into you in some way spiritually, then at that point, perhaps you should be searching for a different church. And I don't say that lightly either. I think people in general should have a commitment to the church that they go to. Um, however, I also don't think that your commitment to a church or a local church body is exactly the same as having a commitment to the church with a capital C or the body of Christ. I think very often Christians also conflate those two things, saying like, I I have a commitment to the body, and they're referring to their local church. And that's not necessarily true at all. Sometimes the best thing that you could possibly do for the body of Christ is finding a place that you can serve and be a better part of that body somewhere else. Sometimes leaving is the best thing to do, but I generally caution people from leaving churches for flippant reasons because usually there is a lot of personal responsibility in here as well. You can't just expect, like I said, if you go to a big church and you 
have like a thousand other people in the church on Sunday and your pastor doesn't doesn't take you out to coffee every single week, that's not a problem. But what is a problem is if you don't have those spiritual needs met yourself and you have tried to get them met. If you haven't tried to get them met, you should. And if they're not being met, then you need to do something about it. That's all I have for this episode of Good Monsters. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.